This video will take you through the most basic tool for creating games in Desmos, which is Actions. If you're a casual Desmos user for school, you may have seen Desmos Games, or heard of the Desmos Art Competition, where some incredible interactive graphs have been finalists. If you've ever wanted to develop a game, or any other interactive project in Desmos, Actions are a great place to start. This tutorial assumes that you have a basic understanding of how to use Desmos for its intended purposes, including graphing and variables. If you aren't familiar with how to use Desmos, there's a great tutorial series on the official Desmos channel. Actions are an advanced feature of Desmos, which allow you to programmatically assign new values to variables. If you want to enable Actions, you need a Desmos account. Once you sign up, go into your account settings, Advanced, and then check the checkbox to enable Actions. This setting will persist between graphs. Actions are based around rightward facing arrows, which could be typed with a subtraction sign and then a greater than sign. For people with coding experience, this character is the Desmos assignment operator. If we have a variable a, we can type out an action that acts on it. This action reads a becomes 3, or a gets assigned to 3. You notice that an arrow appears on the left of this action, which you can press to trigger the action. When we press it, a goes to 3. If we wanted to make the action increment a by 1, we could change the right side of the expression to assign a to itself plus 1. Just with these tools, we could make a basic clicker game. Let's use some more descriptive variable names. I'm going to use cookies. To type subscript, you just have to type an underscore character. Now let's make the game more adjustable by incrementing cookies with another variable, click value. You can actually assign actions to names just like variables. So let's call this action click. Now we can hide away our variables and actions in a folder. You can make a folder using the plus button above the expression list, or just type folder. You can name folders and drag any number of things into them, but you can't nest folders in other folders. Because our click action is named, we can reference it anywhere and it will have the same functionality. We can also reference the cookies variable and it will show its value in the bottom right of the expression. Next, let's add an upgrade click value action that increments the value of the click value variable by 1. If we want to make it cost cookies to upgrade, we can pair the click value increment with reducing cookies by a new variable, upgrade cost. The issue with this current line is that you can spend cookies even if you don't have enough. To solve this, we'll need to take advantage of Desmos piecewise notation. So let's pretend we're graphing normally, and we wanted to take a graph of x squared if x is less than or equal to 2, and a graph of x if x is more than 2. You could graph that as such. Notice how each condition has a colon between it and its expression, and how each statement is separated by a comma. If you prefer code, you can see this as Desmos if statement. We can actually forgo the second condition and just have the comma. A statement at the end like this acts as the else of the statement, which will be run if all previous conditions aren't met. Let's apply this notation to our upgrade action. We have to place parentheses around the two actions so that they run together. An expression like this wouldn't give the intended functionality because the cookies being deducted would be run if the cookies were less than 10. With this functionality, we now have an extremely simple clicker game. If we wanted to make it an idle game, however, we would need to use another key tool for making Desmos games, the ticker. The ticker can run actions every set number of milliseconds. To add a ticker to your graph, either use the plus drop down again, or type ticker in a new expression line. 
By default, the time between each tick is 0 milliseconds, which just means Desmos will run the actions as fast as it can, even if it's inconsistent. We want to run a tick every second, so I'll put 1000 milliseconds. Let's add new variables for our auto clicker's number and cost in a separate folder. Next, let's add some actions that will define their functionality. And now we can put the tick action into the ticker. Just with these actions, we have a fully functioning clicker game. Now, obviously, this doesn't have much going on, so I would encourage you to experiment with this. Some ideas of things to add besides more upgrades would be scaling upgrade costs, which you can do by defining the cost of the variables in terms of the amount of that object. Another pretty important action to add would be a reset command, something that sets all the variables to their initial values. Another thing that you might want is some actual graphics and interface on the graph portion of the calculator, which I'll hopefully cover in the next video. Make sure to save, and until then, thank you for watching.